Greetings everyone, Professor Fiore here. Now we're going to look at how to compute the slew rate in a multi-stage op-amp circuit. This is perhaps not quite as straightforward as you would expect. Consider a three-stage op-amp circuit using three different op-amps, three different slew rates. So, just to keep this simple, I've got uh, a nice non-inverting configuration here for each one of these. I'm using different gains, but basically, you know, it's the RF over RI plus one. So the first stage here, using a 741, 10K over 10K, that's one plus one. This thing has a gain of two. Over here with a TL071, 30K over 10K, three plus one, that's four. And then final output stage in LM318, 9K over 1K, plus 1, 10. All right, so we've got a gain of 4, gain of 10, gain of 2. Now, the slew rates on these op amps. For the 741, I've measured these in the simulator, and I'll show you this in just a sec. You could normally just look up typical values in a data sheet, right, and run from there. But what if you don't, um, you know, you don't have a data sheet, there's a wide range on it, uh, you know, you're using your simulator here. You want a little bit more accuracy. Um, you know, we'll dive in. I'll show you how to do this. But in any case, the 741 is going to work out to uh, 0.7 volts per microsecond for slew rate. The um, 071, 081, that series is, is basically 13 volts per microsecond. And the 318 is uh, sitting at 70 volts per microsecond. Right? So you'll see a little bit of variation on this, but... Those are pretty good numbers to start with, all right? So the question becomes, if I throw a signal in back here, what sort of slew rate do I get out here? I mean, is it the slowest one of the group? Is it 0.7? Is it the 70 at the output? Is it some average of the three? Is it something else, right? It might not be immediately apparent what's going on here. Um, and you want to know that because you want to figure out what the power uh, bandwidth is, right? In other words, how large of an input sine wave can I get before it starts slewing at a certain frequency, right? Okay, this is, you know, a useful kind of calculation, right? I mean, it's easy enough for one stage. You know, we have, we have um, a little power bandwidth, an Fmax calculation for that, right? I've got a separate video that just talks about that for for, you know, a single stage amplifier. But when we get into a multi-stage, it gets a little trickier, right? The thing you have to keep in the back of your mind is different op amps are amplifying different level signals, right? I mean, the output amplifier is dealing with a larger signal than the stage before it, which is dealing with a larger signal than the stage before it, right? Gain of two, gain of four, gain of 10. So if you think about it that way, it would probably make sense that the output stage would have to have a higher slew rate because it's dealing with bigger signals, All right? Your power bandwidth is a function of how big the signal is at its output. Well, you know, if the output over here is 10 volts, that doesn't mean I have 10 volts here. Gain of 10, that means I only have one volt over here. And if I have one volt here, then obviously, because this thing has a gain of four, there's only a quarter of a volt out here. So, yeah, this thing needs to be able to handle this 10-volt swing. This thing doesn't. You know, this thing is only going to produce a quarter of a volt when this thing is, is uh, producing 10 volts. All right? So does it work out to be the final op amp? Well, certainly it can't be any faster than the final op amp. That wouldn't make any sense, right? I mean, I could put in um, an op amp back here that had, you know, a 500 volt per microsecond slew rate and one over here that was similarly fast. But, you know, ultimately it's going to be limited by this 318 at 70. It can't be any faster than the final stage, but it could be slower. And that's the key thing. It could be slower. If all the op amps are identical, in other words, if I had all 318s in here, well, then the output would be at 70 volts per microsecond. And that would be the end of it. Or if I had all, you know, 071s or 081s, it's going to be 13 straight across, right? Limited by that output, output stage. But in this case, maybe not so much, All right? So before I actually dive into this, let's take a look at how you would measure the slew rates, 
right? So this is how I'm going to you know, cross-check my models over here. I want to know what they are. So what we do is I'm going to break out each um, op amp's output separately. I'm going to have separate outputs, right, like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these outputs individually, right, V1, V2, and V3, to see what I get. Now, to guarantee that I'm getting slewing, I'm going to put in a nice big square wave over here. Don't put a sine wave in here in the simulator. Or if you're trying to do this in lab, all right, you want to make sure that this thing is actually going into slew. So put in a square wave, nice fast edge, good size signal so that you know this thing is going into slewing. All right. And then I'm just going to do a transient analysis. So in lab, you get out your uh, trusty oscilloscope, right? And off you would go. All right, so I am going to run this since I'm using, uh, I set this up for one kilohertz, so I'm going to set this up for two milliseconds so I can see a couple of cycles. All right, and uh, I don't really need to see the excitation, so I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, and here is my output. All right, a little bit of a legend over here. Okay, so V1, V2, and V3, right? So V1 is the 741. V2 is the uh, 071, and then the uh, V3 is the 318. So you can see the edges, right? So I need to zoom in on this to get some accuracy. All right, that should be pretty good. All right, so this sort of olive color, V1, this is my 741 out here. The sort of Kelly green in the middle, that's V2. That's the, uh, the 071. And then the, the sort of maroonish, that's V3, that's the 318. So the way you would do this is you would just grab cursor. And like I said, you'd do this in lab. You know, modern oscilloscope would have cursors. Digital oscilloscope, right? So you just take these things. So here's my readout. And I would just um, basically take my time differential and my voltage differential and divide them out, right? So this thing is saying, well, the X, the time is 17.37 microseconds, and the amplitude is 12.11 um, volts. So I just, you know, I want volts per microsecond, so just divide this number by this number. You can see, obviously, it's going to be a little bit less than 1. Um, and if you do it, you'll actually get 0.7. Um, if you want to, you know, you can kind of eyeball this easily without getting out your calculator. All right, so this is just about 10 microseconds, just a little shy of 10 microseconds, 9.9585 micro. And this is at 6.94. 464 four volts. So that's 10 times what I need, right? That's 10 micro versus one micro. So then this is going to be 10 times bigger as well. So you can see, all right, if this was slightly bigger, this would be slightly bigger. So at one microsecond, that's going to be 0.7, uh, 0 0.7 volts, right? That's, that's the edge on here. That's all you have to do. And then you're just going to repeat this for, you know, one of the, one of the, uh, other plots, right? So here's the, uh, 071, I'm going to do the same thing. Just make sure you, you sit it on here where it's nice and flat. You might have to zoom in a little bit more, but same sort of deal, right? So this is saying, okay, that's about a microsecond, just luckily on my part, and it's 12.928, right? 13, basically 13 volts per microsecond, as, as we would have expected, all right? Great. Okay, so that's how you would measure the individual op amps. Now let's go back to our circuit and see what we're actually going to get out of here. Okay, so again, 0 0.7, 13, and 70. Hmm. Think about this for a sec. Like I said, it can't be any faster than this. But this thing can't produce anything, an edge, any faster than what it gets. So if this op amp, if the second op amp is slewing, whatever that edge is gets multiplied by the gain of this amplifier. I mean, this amplifier doesn't know, right, in quotes, doesn't know that this thing is slewing. All it knows is it's getting a ramp coming in, right? A slewed edge. So it's just going to multiply it, in this case, by a gain of 10. And the same thing is true for this op amp. It can only go as fast as the preceding stage. So what I really need to do is sort of cascade what's coming through here. So here's the technique. Here's how you do this. All right. You assume each op amp is you know by itself it, nothing else is slewing you do this in turn okay so you start with the first op amp the 741 
you assume that no other op amps are slewing. And the question is, what would this produce? So you take its output slew rate, and then you multiply it by the gain of the next amplifier and the gain of the next amplifier, and you come to an output. All right? So the 741 is going to produce an edge at about 0.7 volts per microsecond. All right? 0.7 volts per microsecond. That edge is coming through the second op amp with a gain of 4. So you multiply that up. Right? So that original 0.7 volts in one microsecond is going to turn into four times that, or 2.8 volts, in that same microsecond at this point, right at the output of the second op amp. And then that is what's fed into the next op amp, right, which has a gain of 10. So you take the 2.8, you multiply that by 10, and you get 28 volts per microsecond. That's assuming this is not slowing, and that's assuming this is not slowing. Right? So that's what I would get at V3. That's what I get at the output due to the slew rate of the first op amp. Now repeat that process for the second op amp. So this device can do 13 volts per microsecond, but that edge goes through this amplifier that has a, a gain of 10. So that 13 volts in one microsecond turns into 130 volts in one microsecond. Right? 130 volts per microsecond. And then you do it again. Right? I mean, there was only one more gain stage, so we're done. In this case, there are no more gain stages, so we just say, well, what does this one do? Well, it does 70. So here's your three numbers, 28 volts per microsecond, 130 volts per microsecond, and 70 volts per microsecond. The slowest one wins. In other words, the slowest one is the limitation. So this system should have, in other words, at V3, at the output, in this cascade, should have a system slew rate of 28 volts per microsecond. So it's none of the three values. And in this case, the 741 slews first. So if you set this up, if you weren't aware of this effect, and you measured the output on your scope, and you'd say, hey, I got 28 volts per microsecond. Hmm, something's wrong. Let me go in and put a faster op amp in here for the 318. Oh, that doesn't seem to make any difference. And it's not going to, because it's going to slew at 70. It can't produce a faster output than, you know, basically what it's getting, okay? If it's already slewed back here, doesn't matter how fast this one is, all right? So you might turn around and say, oh, well, the 13, all right? Maybe that's, maybe that's the problem. I'll, I'll go make this one faster. Actually, of the three, this is the last op amp that's going to slew, all right? Its effective output referred slew rate is 130 volts per microsecond. So, sorry, it's the first one, all right? But, you know, here's an interesting thing to consider. This system has a slew rate that's not quite half, right? maybe, you know, 40-ish percent, right, of what the 318 is. Yet, look at the difference in the slew rates themselves, 0.7 versus 70, right? I mean, that's a 100 to 1 change. So what does this really tell you? What it tells you is, you know, when you go look for an op amp at the front end of the system, it does not have to have the same performance characteristics as the final op amp. This does not have to be as fast as the final op amp has to be because it's dealing with smaller signals. On the other hand, you know, another way of looking at this is consider like what the noise is. This thing has to have much better noise performance than this one because it's dealing with smaller signals. So the signal to noise ratio is more critical back here. So when I go and design a multi-stage amplifier like this, the very first stage, I'm not quite as concerned about the slew rate. In other words, I can tolerate a much lower, slower slew rate than I can at the output, but I do have to be a little bit more careful about things like input noise, right? Because that's going to be multiplied through in the following stages. The final stage, that's got to deal with the biggest signals, so it has to be the fastest, but its noise performance doesn't have to be as good as the first stage because that's already established, right? The signal to noise ratio is established back here. All right, so let's, you know, let's do a little proof in this here pudding, okay? So same dealie, run this up and zoom in on, oops, I don't wanna do that just yet. Let me get my uh, legend out here. There, that's better. Um, let's zoom in on here. Okay, so again, V1, V2, V3. So I really care about V3. I care about the output, right? So let's zoom in on this 
one more time. Okay, so let's get some just to, just for fun's sake, right? I'll just put down some for the first one. You get over there. All right. Okay, so if I brought this down to somewhere around 10 microseconds, all right, and there's our 7 volts. So again, 0.7 volts per microsecond, as expected at V1. Now let's go and look at uh, V2 for fun. Okay, what do we get out there? You know, we calculated that it was actually supposed to be like uh, 2.8 because of the gain of 4. So, let's see, do I have enough? No, I don't. Let's see, if, let's try 2 is pretty close. Okay, so I'm getting 5.6 roughly. So, in 2, you'd have to cut that in half. All right, so that would be like 2.8. Hey, that looks pretty good. And finally, the very last one is the uh, V3. All right, that's our very output. Make sure when you do this, you're on a nice flat spot. You're not off on some little curvy bit, you know, like down here or something. But in any case, uh, so let's just move this around a little bit. Mm, let's see, maybe I can get a half. Okay, that's pretty good. That's half a microsecond, and we're getting 13.75. So, you know, you double that up for time to get one microsecond, and you're going to be looking at just shy of 28, which is exactly what we calculated. All right. Beautiful. All right. Exactly what we calculated. 20 volt, 28 volts per microsecond. So you want a faster output. The first thing you have to do is get a faster op amp over here. All right. How much faster? Eh, you know, about two and a half times as fast. You know, if you can get something up around two volts um, per microsecond, then this is going to slew and this is going to slew at about the same time. This is the last one. That's the last one you're going to speed up, all right? Because it's telling you it's getting 130, all right? Okay, so takeaway message. The value can't be any faster. The slew rate value can't be any faster than the final op amp, but it could be slower if one of the prior stages slews first, all right? And this is the way you calculate it. Take the, take the slew rate, multiply it by the gain of the following stages, come out with an output value, Repeat that for all op amps, right? And then the slowest one is your limit. Okay, in this case, I say, you know, lowest value wins, quote unquote, or loses, depending on uh, what your perspective is. Okay? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time. Take care.